International Trade Focus is brought to you by Goyle and Agricultural Development Bank. Coming up on International Trade Focus, we shall take a look at the role that the Ghana International Aluminium Development Corporation, GIADEC, is playing to ensure that the country can capitalize on bauxite aluminium production for national development. And later, the Russia-Ukraine war continues to impact the Ghanaian economy as transport and food drove March consumer inflation to 19.4% year-on-year, the highest since September 2016, according to data from the Ghana Statistical Service. Ghana has been mining and exporting raw bauxite for several decades, but in terms of foreign exchange inflows, the result has been nothing to write home about. It's against this backdrop that the government of Ghana has come up with a clear plan to reverse this phenomenon by rolling out a strategy that will enable us to earn much higher foreign exchange for our bauxite and also develop a proper value chain that will lead to the establishment of related industries that can create more jobs and raw materials that can feed other industries. On today's edition of International Trade Focus, we shall take a look at Ghana's bauxite industry and measures and strategies that have been put in place to boost this industry. My name is Anna Spio and this is International Trade Focus. International Trade Focus is brought to you by Gold, Good Energy, ADB, Truly Agric and more. Public Elegance and Pediasa Valley Resorts. Stay tuned. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goal Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead with expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. Are you an importer or exporter? Do you need quick financing at the best rate on the market? ADB has good news for you. Walk into any agricultural development bank location nationwide for that solution to all your trade financing needs. ADB offers you pre-financing of exports and imports, post-shipment credit facilities, bank guarantees, the issuance and acceptance of letters of credit, documentary bills for collection, outward documentary collection. Enjoy free advisory services from our well-trained, dedicated trade officers. Exporters of agricultural products are encouraged to take advantage of this great service. For further inquiries, call us on 0302-210-210. ADB, making trade finance easy. ADB, truly a Greek and more. ADB. Breathtaking picture X views. The essence of tranquility recrafted. What you desire? A romantic expedition, syndicate sessions, banquet and conferences, or a desperate weekend getaway? Just name it. It's exclusively packaged for you at Pediasi Valley Resort. A brief, spacious rooms, ultra modern gym facilities, games, indoors, terrace, and lawn restaurants, and lounges. Cozy private dining and all the swimmers paradise aquaba any day all year round to pedriasi valley resort the acts of serenity skillfully served
stay tuned for our focal point segment. Ghana holds the third largest reserves of bauxite in Africa at an estimated 960 million metric tons, most of which is found in the regions of Awaso, Chebi and Nginehim. However, Ghana's bauxite remains highly unexploited. Out of the three bauxite concessions, only one, the Awaso concession, has been mined since the history of bauxite mining in Ghana. Reports show that Ghana exported 329 million 681,000 metric tons of raw bauxite in March 2018. This records a decrease from the previous number of 451,265,000 metric tons for December 2017. Although Ghana has been mining and exporting raw bauxite for decades, in terms of foreign exchange inflows, the result has been nothing to write home about. It's interesting to note that whereas a ton of raw, unrefined bauxite cost between $30 to $50 on the international market, a ton of alumina cost between $600 to $1,100. A ton of aluminium, an end product, cost about $3,600 on the world market. Therefore, to say that the country needs to put measures in place to add value to the bauxite we mine is an understatement. The aluminium value chain consists of bauxite mining, alumina refining, aluminium smelting and aluminium fabrication. The higher one goes in the value chain, the more revenue is generated. In recent times, stakeholders have come to the realization that adding value to the raw bauxite Ghana exports is the surest way to ensure that the country generates an even higher revenue, a move that will boost Ghana's economy and take us a step further towards the goal of becoming a self-sufficient nation. On August 2018, the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation, GEADIC, was established through an Act of Parliament to promote and develop a globally competitive integrated aluminium industry in Ghana. Later in 2021, President Nanado Danko Kufado launched the four key projects under the upstream parts of the integrated aluminium industry and also announced the selection of a strategic partner for one of the projects, Rockshaw International, a wholly Ghanaian-owned company. The journey to create an aluminum industry in Ghana began in 1948 through the establishment of the Vol Volta Aluminum Company, Valco, a joint venture initiative between Kaiser Aluminum and Alcoa, two well-known American conglomerates in the aluminum industry. Later, in order to guarantee reliable and competitive power supply for the aluminum smelter that was to be set up, Kaiser Aluminum made an investment together with the government of our first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, in 1961, which led to the building of the Akosombo Dam. It was agreed that Kaiser, subsequent to the construction of the dam, would exploit the country's bauxite resources to serve as feedstock for the smelter at Valku. Unfortunately, this never happened. Even after the construction of the dam, Kaiser continued to depend on his Jamaican bauxite resources for the operation of the smelter. We have thus been unable to put ourselves in a position to develop fully the entire value chain of our bauxite resources and have only mined and exported some of the bauxite in its raw, unprocessed form. That is why upon my assumption of office in 2017, government, with the support of parliament, worked hard to establish the Ghana Integrated Aluminum Development Corporation, a statutory corporation under a well-grounded board of directors with its purposeful chief executive officer and management to spearhead the implementation of government's commitment to build an integrated aluminum industry. Since its formation, the leadership of the corporation has been working assiduously with transaction advisors and other stakeholders 
to ensure that the objective of achieving an integrated aluminum industry is executed in a timely manner. Today, I have the pleasure of launching the four projects that will anchor the development of the integrated aluminum industry. The projects will be de developed concurrently, and they are Project 1, as you have heard, the expansion of the Awa Awasu mine and establishment of a refinery, Project 2, the development of a mine at Inyinehi in Pasaso, and establishment of a refinery, 3, the development of mines at Chebi and Nyinehi and establishment of a refinery, and Project 4, the modernization and expansion of the Valco plant. The vision of building an integrated aluminum industry is very important to us all, and particularly dear to me, given the significant transformational impact it will have on the development of our economy and the considerable potential it has for wealth creation. It is at the heart of our industrial transformation agenda. The execution of four projects in Awaso, Inahin, Pasaso, and Chebi will lead to the creation of business ventures that will see us reducing our reliance on the import of aluminum products and enable us to develop employment and high-paying jobs for our people. They will also ensure integration and value addition across the bauxite aluminum value chain. If we are to be successful in this venture, the development of our nation's railway infrastructure will be vital. I have thus directed the Ministers for Railway Development and Finance to work together to accelerate the realization of our Western and Eastern Railway Lines Railway Network. The port infrastructure necessary to efficient operations for exportation of bulk items has to be developed in tandem as we seek to do in the Buankra Inland Port Project. Government has resolved to support this industry to be globally competitive and hence working to find solutions to ensure competitively priced power is available to meet the requirements of GEADEC and their investment partners. A key area of attention in the development of this entire plan has been the focus on environmental issues with respect to the exploitation of our significant mining deposits. We believe that mining can and must be done in a responsible manner. Government, through its regulatory agencies, will act to protect our environment at all times. The Environmental Protection Agency, has, EPA, has sponsored work to develop a biodiversity and hydrology study for the Etiwa Forest Reserve, which will guide and inform the EPA on how any activities are carried out in the forest. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to announce that GEADEC has completed the selection of a strategic partner for Project 2, which is the development of a mine at Ninehim in Pasaso with a refinery. This is a significant development and one that brings us closer to realizing our plan. Rockshore International, a wholly owned Ghanaian company, is that strategic partner. The choice of a Ghanaian company in a highly competitive process is very pleasing at a time when we're looking for homegrown companies that can compete with the best across the world. I am certain that Rockshore International, with their demonstrable experience and track record, of excellent delivery will be a credible partner to GEADEC. This choice indeed is a major step forward towards building capacity in Ghana for this industry and a partnership that will ensure we develop a Ghanaian solution that will propel our rapid growth. Aluminum is often described as the metal of the future. 
with research defining it amongst others as, quote, an electric vehicle game changer, unquote. His aluminum-based batteries triple the range and charge 70 times faster in comparison to lithium batteries being used concurrent, currently in electric vehicles. If that is the case, we have its raw material, that is bauxite, in abundance in Ghana. The time has come to make a concerted effort, not merely to bring the raw material into play, but also to establish the full value chain of the product so we can have a vibrant aluminum industry in Ghana. We will then have a strong stake in the future. The four key projects are expected to give Ghana a robust aluminum industry that can compete globally and meet local demand. Project 1 is the expansion of existing mine at Awaso and building of a refinery. Project 2 is the development of a mine at Ninehin in Pasaso and a refinery solution. Project 3 is the development of a mine at Chebi and a second mine at Ninehini in Pasaso and building of a refinery. Project 4 is the retrofitting, modernization and expansion of Valco smelter to improve efficiency and increase capacity. These four projects are at various stages of execution, which are in that segment we we'll throw more light on. Although all four projects are key to the development of an integrated aluminium industry, one can say that an improved performance of the Volta Aluminium Company Limited, also known as Valco, is critical. Presently, Giardic has worked with Valco to review their operations and prepare balance sheet restructuring options to position the corporation as a strong institution in order to assess capital funding that will be used to modernize the plant. Between 2020 and 2021, the government has invested about 14 million cities into Valco, the first time the plant has seen any new investment in 13 years. This investment, coupled with buoyant market prices, has resulted in an EBIDA of about $4 million as of September 2021 by Valco. The first time profitability has been reported in a decade. As a result, the plant has been able to increase its maintenance budget, resulting in plant stability, operational uptime, and made significant cost savings. Although it's evident that the country is laying a strong foundation that will ensure that the bauxite and aluminium industry receive the desired boost, stakeholders believe an improved and expanded railway system will go a long way to boost mining prospects. On today's edition of International Trade Figures, we want to have an in-depth conversation with the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation, GIADEC, a body set up by government with the responsibility to manage and develop Ghana's bauxite at all levels. Our in the segment comes up shortly. Don't go away. So yeah. uh, you rightly mentioned um, sustainability. Mm -hmm. It's become a topic or a global um, challenge now. And now, um, any time that mining of minerals comes to play, or is talked about, there's always um, the issue of you know mining responsibly and you know ensuring afforestation yeah. and all of that. So how are you ensuring that um, Ghana hopes to expand our, our mine base in, in terms of bauxite and all of that? How are we ensuring that we comply to um, environmental best practices? We're working this into our DNA. Okay, so it is uh, the way we select our partners. It is the way we engage with. Uh, anyone we deal with. So we we very much have a very clear adherence to um, environmental uh, regulations. So whether it's uh, in Ghana, under EPA, Forestry Commission, Water Commission, uh, all those uh, entities, statutory bodies that are set up to make sure these areas are regulated. They all uh, 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 are the organs that we work with and for and with so that Essentially, we are making sure that these things, we, we, we uh, fully respect the, the laws of Ghana in regards to uh, management of the environmental 
uh, issues. Then there are international standards that, again, we are uh, uh, very much focused on achieving. So f basically, we want to drive best practice in responsible mining activities and how we mine the environment, uh, our environmental management action plans. Uh, we're developing that. Uh, we're carrying out biodiversity and hydrology studies uh, in every area that we're going to be mining in uh, to make sure that we understand the, the baseline situation, the base case of what exists in these uh, uh, areas, uh, from a flora, fauna, water bodies, uh, uh, rivers, etc., so that we do not disturb the um, uh, ecosystem, the environment, uh, uh, as much as possible. Or where we do uh, disturb it, we have a management action plan on how to mitigate uh, against any adverse uh, things that would happen. Uh, so, so that means that the management action plan is one that we will follow, that will be monitored by the regulatory bodies to ensure that we do the right thing. So that's what responsible mining is all about. Then uh, added to this is reforestation. And already, even before we start mining, we've been engaged in supporting initiatives around uh, uh, you know, reforestation or around uh, restoring uh, you know, areas that have been devastated, forests that have been devastated. Uh, GIADEC has been involved in a few programs like that. And of course, when we do mine, part of our management action plan uh, after the period we mine is to go back to do reforestation. Uh, and you know, when, when, when people talk about bauxite mining, yes, it's very invasive. Uh, to um, you know where we're mining, whether forest or, or an area, but then we're not going to mine the entire area at the same time. We mine in various parcels, you know. So we finish parcel A, we move to parcel B, and as we move to parcel B, we restore parcel A. So we're not going to leave a long trail of devastation. We're going to leave a trail uh, uh, that has been managed, uh, you know, and and you see the management of this. And this is happening, you know, um, we've, we've had the, the benefit of looking at where uh, this has been done well in, in some of the, uh, the world's, um, uh, you know, in, in some cases, very, very tough environmental conditions. And it's been done well. And, and we want to be able to replicate the best practice and also build the capacity to be able to even improve on that. And that is where we are. So environmental action plans, managing and addressing issues around the environment is, is, is that's what I mean by we are baking this into the DNA of GIADEC so that it becomes uh, just part of how we do business. Right, and uh, let's also take a look at um, plans for the citizens of the land or the indigents of the various um, mining sites. Yeah. So we hear of the um, Biafra, Biafra war in Nigeria and all of that. So in our <laughs> own case, touch on wood, yeah. I mean, that's not going to happen here. Yeah, but absolutely. prevention, you know, is always the yeah. key. So in our own case, what, what kind of strategies or policies or plans do you have for the communities within which you mine? Yeah. So again, even ahead of mining, one of the key things we have done and, and done well, uh, if I may add, is the whole area of community engagement. That is vital. Uh, to the success of, of uh, uh, any such uh, uh, operation, uh, more so, you know, bauxite mining. Uh, that means that we have, from day one, focused on building a relationship with the communities that we're going to be engaged with, making them part of our development planning, making them aware of what we're doing, understanding what their needs are, understanding uh, the various economic activities they're carrying out today and how what we do may impact that. Um, understanding uh, uh, how they want to address development issues within their communities. And, and the, the best way of doing this, or, or one of the, the, the best ways of doing this, is to engage them in the process. So we've established what we call 19 member committees in each of our mining communities. And I've talked about the three areas where we have bauxite, so in Awaso, in Yinehin, uh, in, in Pasaso, which is uh, very uh, much... Uh, uh, larger community uh, uh, linked to the Ninehin and Pasaso mines, and then uh, Chebi. So we've got these four 19-member committees, and these are formed of representatives right across the community. So from traditional rulers to opinion leaders in the society to representative groups, women groups, youth groups, uh, you know, etc., uh, to the municipal authorities, so assemblymen, to uh, even the security agencies, and and we've done we've we've been intentional uh, about doing this and, and thoughtful about doing this, to the extent that we want we 
desperately want to understand what the community needs and to work with them as partners. What we're building is a relationship of trust where they, they, they welcome us to work in their communities because they see the benefits that will accrue to the community because we've understood the things that they're looking for. They're looking for jobs. They're looking for, uh, uh, of course, better uh, management of their environment. They're looking for um, development in, 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 in the areas. I mean, as we speak, for instance, last week, uh, last Friday, we were in Yinehin. Uh, we launched our commission, the vice president commissioned the Yinehin roads, call it the Yinehin bauxite roads. And the reason this, this investment has gone in ahead of even starting mining is, is, is part of, uh, if you like, realizing our part of this relationship, this bargain, this uh, uh, social contract, so to speak, that we have with them, that we're bringing development here and, and we're, re we're, we're going to use the resources to your benefit, of course, to the benefit of the nation at large. But the, the whole community thing is, is ingrained in how we're going to do this business, and that's what we're doing. So the chiefs um, uh, of, of these areas, the uh, Omanis, the you know, uh, uh, kings, if I can call it that, in Asante, of course, everything uh, from the Asante Hini to uh, you know, uh, the Ninehin Hini and the uh, Pasaso Hini and all those uh, people are involved. Same with the uh, uh, Awaso from Ojia to um, uh, the uh, traditional authorities there, and, and in Chebi, the uh, um, Osajefo uh, and, and others are all involved in it. So it's important that we drive this in a very comprehensive way. And the, the whole community engagement thing is, is something that we, um, uh, we, we've invested a lot of time and effort in to be just, to, just to achieve that. Right, so um, one thing that, that I, I find um, noteworthy is um, these projects that we are talking about, the expansion and modernization of Valco, expanding uh, bauxite space and all of that. How are we funding this, these projects? Does it depend solely on investors? That's a very good question, Anna, and um, that's something that's, that's also unique to how we have established GIADEC. So arguably, uh, for the first time, we're looking at this as a purely private sector-driven initiative. So, so we, GIADEC, are going to partner the private sector in effectively driving six billion US dollars worth of investment over these four projects. GIADEC, because of the act that established GIADEC, will take a minimum stake in the enterprises that we set up. So if it's mining, refining, smelting, even the downstream industries, if where we get involved in, uh, we will seek to have a 30% stake in each development. So in each of these four projects, GIADEC would have a minimum 30% stake. Uh, and, and, and as such, the debt and equity structures that will develop will be based on us fulfilling our uh, um, uh, uh, obligations as an equity uh, partner in, in each of these ventures and of course jointly with our partners raising the debt component that we need to drive these industries. So it's, it's a purely private sector focused thing. This is not going to be something that will be on the balance sheet of government uh, or anything but because government is the ultimate shareholder of GIADEC, government will of course uh, uh, accrue the financial benefits that come with this. Mm. Um, was there a point you wanted to make? Yes, yes. So, so I mean I was talking about um, uh, what we're doing in the community. I think the, the, it's important that all of this as well, uh, already we're starting to see benefits. I've talked about the roads in Yinehin, uh, and I also want to highlight that the work that we've started uh, even in Yinehin today, uh, we're employing close to 200 people uh, in, 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 the, in the business itself, and then of course there are a few uh, other indirect uh, um, uh, jobs that have been created. But jobs are being created today uh, you know, hiring uh, everything from not uh, skilled labor to um, uh, unskilled labor. So, so all of that's happening today. Graduates are being employed, etc., and lives are being transformed. I mean, there are stories that I can tell you of, of people I've seen who, whose businesses are even beginning to change because of the activity that's coming in there. And uh, uh, whether it's a, a welder or uh, you know a caterer or uh, other uh, uh, small businesses like that that is beginning to happen and, and that is really gratifying because ultimately this is all about uh, improving people's lives, improving livelihoods and uh, improving the local economy so that the local economy benefits first and I'm glad to say that's where it is starting and the multiplier impact on the rest of the economy will be felt uh, you know, in, in times to come.
So now we can't have any conversation without talking about the African continental free trade area. Yeah. Trading has officially uh, commenced. Yes. So, I um, mean, everything that uh, we've discussed so far, mm. there's no doubt that um, your activities will fuse directly in there and yeah. help us gain competitive advantage. So, mm. um, how is GEDEC positioning itself to ensure that Ghana is able to harness the full benefits of the continental free trade area? Again, very good question. I think, you know, we're living in um, uh, times when, you know, uh, His Excellency's uh, vision of a Ghana beyond aid, uh, he even expands it to an Africa beyond aid. Uh, he's heralded this on international uh, fora, whether it's in the African Union or at uh, the UN, etc. He's very much focused on this. Uh, that's why he was very instrumental in making sure the Africa continental free trade area was headquartered in Ghana. And that is, uh, you know, is a... Is a uh, the, the largest uh, EU uh, organization that uh, we have had. So, so it's a very big win for Ghana. But that said, the, the focus is on making sure that industry benefits from the establishment of an African market. And uh, this is happening, so whether it's the Association of Ghana Industries or uh, the various um, uh, 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 companies operating here, we now have access to a much wider market, uh, much uh, bigger GDP, population, et cetera, that we can sell to. And uh, the, the fact that the uh, constraints that we had in inter-country uh, uh, trading across Africa have been removed or will be removed through Africa Continental Free Trade Area gives all of us a huge opportunity. This is something which GIADEC is very focused on. Uh, as we speak, we're soon going to be doing a workshop that is bringing together various industry players in Ghana and outside Ghana to talk about what we're doing, the integrated aluminum industry, and the kind of market uh, that, that we will be looking at, including uh, the sort of industries that can develop in Ghana to service that market. So we are already looking uh, to that. Uh, you know, and, and the way we're planning this thing is we want to make sure we are always asking ourselves, you know, where do we want to be in you know, a few years' time? What sort of markets do we want to be focused on? What are the conditions for entering those markets? How do we prepare today to take advantage of that? you know, uh, tomorrow. So these things are things that we're doing. We're working very closely with the um, uh, Ministry of Trade and Industry, Ministry of Finance, um, and also with the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. We're in the same building as them, and, and you know, we, we've already established those links. So we're preparing very much uh, to, to um, be part of that market, to uh, uh, recognize the fact that we have a much bigger market than uh, only Ghana, the fact that the, these barriers are coming down, uh, the fact that it's a real opportunity that we should, uh, uh, you know, uh, really grasp, and, and, and that's our focus. So you just tuned in, you're watching International Trade Focus, and this is our in-depth segment. We're having a conversation with the CEO of GEADEC, Mr. Michael Anza. The conversation continues after this break. Don't go away. Breathtaking picturesque views, the essence of tranquility recrafted, what you desire, a romantic expedition, syndicate sessions, banquet and conferences, or a discreet weekend getaway. Just name it. It's exclusively packaged for you at Pediasi Valley Resort. Every spacious rooms, ultra modern gym facilities, games, indoors, terrace and lawn restaurants and lounges, cozy private dining, and all the swimmers' paradise. Aquaba, any day, all year round to Pediasi Valley Resort. The acts of serenity skillfully served. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 Lubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead with expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy.
A warm welcome back. The conversation continues with the CEO of Giadec. We're taking a look at how his outfit is ensuring that Ghana is able to capitalize on bauxite and aluminium production for national development and economic growth. There's, there's one thing, one point that you mentioned that uh, I, was, I was coming to that is um, um, based on everything that we've we've spoken about when Giadec was established, its mandate and all of that. Um, as the CEO, how would you assess your level of progress so far? So we started off by uh, uh, me telling you about when we operationalized Giadec, uh, you know, just uh, uh, from beginning in March 2019. You know, this organization started without any infrastructure, without any footprint uh, in Ghana. Uh, we did the smart thing of um, uh, taking 100% stake in Valco and the 20% stake in Ghana Bauxite Company. So that gave us certain operational leverage or, or some uh, uh, business on the ground. But what you see today uh, has come a long way from where we were in March 2019. Now we have uh, offices, we have staff, we have uh, you know uh, teams focused on what we're doing. We've also come a long way in terms of defining uh, what, what our, our mission is, our vision, and uh, uh, our strategy for delivering that. We've launched the four projects that together define the integrated aluminum industry. We've made good progress uh, with uh, the, 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 the development of the projects. We've gone through extensive investor engagement uh, uh, briefings uh, to, to bring various uh, investors to the table to talk to us about what we do. Um, we've uh, gradually gained a stronghold, well, not so much when I say a stronghold, we gained a name in the industry as to what we're doing and the approach Ghana is taking and, you know, uh, various uh, uh, players, even including top 10 players, are knocking on our doors talking about what we do. So clearly, uh, we're, we're being heard, if I can put it that way. Uh, we've made progress with uh, the work that we started on Project 2, people who are employed, the impact it's having on the communities. Uh, we've made progress with restructuring arrangements in Project One, uh, the, the Awasu expansion that you'll hear more of uh, in the fullness of time. Uh, and uh, we've made progress on, along the other two projects as well. So it's, it's been, it's been um, honestly, a long journey. I mean, it's been over a period of time. It's only sort of two to three years. But we've made great strides. We've made great strides. We've um, defined our direction. Uh, we've got a very good team, and, and you know, uh, I, I, I'm very proud of the culture that we've built in Giadec, the investment we're making in our people. Uh, they are focused on execution excellence. They are focused on integrity. They are focused on uh, you know, doing business in a very transparent way. And, and the, the energy that we drive in Giadec is, 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 is really something that is, uh, I think is great. And um, you know, um, uh, people who work here, uh, in large part, enjoy what we do and are very passionate about what we do. And, and these, you know, the, the people, uh, the biggest success uh, and, and all those other things that I've talked about. So that was you assessing your level of progress. Now let's make some projections into mm -hmm. the future. In the next five years, based on all the work that you started doing now, uh, where do you think Ghana will find itself in terms of its um, aluminium and bauxite industry? I, I'm pondering uh, a little because I think that question is uh, it's based on a number of things. Um, you know, so here we are, we have GearDeck, which, as I said, we've established and, and given an operational base to. We've established it with a 100% ownership of Valco, established with a 20% stake in an operating mine. Uh, but the, the key thing here is also the fact that the 900 million metric tons of bauxite that we have in Ghana sit under GearDeck. So it's all been effectively uh, novated to Giadec, and Giadec has that as an asset base. That is significantly important. So these three things, you know, the ownership of the uh, bauxite resources, the stakes that we have in Ghana Bauxite Company, and the 100% ownership of Valco, 
has given us a strong balance sheet uh, to, to operate and to, to be able to effectively do everything that we want to do. Uh, as we build and develop these four projects that I've talked about, we're leveraging the bauxite that we have into these projects. We're leveraging uh, the, what we have in Valco into these projects and we're, seeing, we're going to see the transformation of um, uh, everything from the mining to the uh, uh, smelting of aluminium and then also developing of downstream industries. Five years from now, I see all these projects uh, being developed. Uh, I see these projects driving economic activity, not just in their local areas, but having an impact uh, on the GDP of the country. Uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 the bits that I talked about, the infrastructure support that is needed, like railways, ports and harbors, etc. That time scale is what we're talking about to see them developed. And of course, once they are developed, it will accelerate the pace of this. It will accelerate the investment that will come into this. You know, railway, I, I passionately believe that once we do that, we will see a lot of uh, development being driven because we just have this uh, more efficient means of transport. So five years from now, I see these projects developed, you know, uh, uh, with um, uh, this uh, infrastructure pieces coming in as well. I see jobs being created uh, in, in the tens of thousands. Uh, I see its impact uh, on local and the national economy. And I see the, this driving industrial transformation. Um, you know, we talk about digitization, we talked about various things that we're doing. Industrial transformation is another key area that will bring transformation to this country, that will bring about jobs, that will bring about higher GDP, that will bring about, um, uh, you know, uh, economic well-being. Now, um, I talked about this being a multi-year uh, development, you know, multi-investment, um, multi-year uh, development. So five years is a short time in that period, but we will see the beginnings of this. We will see the, this taking root in terms of these projects taking root. We'll see the investments beginning to bear fruit. And of course, uh, this is, you know, these projects are 30, 40, 50 year projects, and, and, and they are gonna have a significant uh, um, uh, impact on the economy as a whole as, as, as we drive in that direction. Right, we are about uh, wrapping up, but do you have any final words before we go? Yes, what I'll say is that this is a very exciting uh, uh, time uh, for, for, for us in Giyadek and uh, indeed I'll say uh, uh, for the entire country that we've dared to believe that we can conceive of this and drive this. Uh, that we are driving a program that we've been very clear about in terms of how we want to position ourselves in Africa and, and of course globally, uh, that for the first time we're building an integrated aluminium industry uh, in Ghana, which will arguably be the, the first in Africa because the only other African country that is close to doing that is Guinea. They have huge bauxite uh, resources. Uh, but given the advantages, uh, location advantages and factor advantages we have, um, a mixture of, uh, uh, you know, uh, even our political stability, relative political stability uh, across Africa, uh, uh, access to power, uh, you know, and uh, the resource being in Ghana and all those things. I think, you know, um, uh, we have the capacity to do what we're doing and that positions us in a strong way, which is why investors are looking at us. So uh, I will say that this is a very important thing that we're doing in Ghana, a significant step that we're taking uh, and uh, a huge opportunity for this country uh, to see the development of an integrated aluminium industry. A huge opportunity to demonstrate that through adding value, we can build significant uh, uh, advantage in what we do and we can earn better uh, uh, incomes uh, for uh, uh, not just the nation, but for the people who work in this industry as well. And um, I think uh, it's, it's one of the uh, game changers that uh, uh, you know we have in Ghana and this will really dri drive and spur economic development in a massive way in Ghana. And that was the CEO of GEDEC, Mr. Michael Ansay, was our guest for today. We took a look at the role that his outfit is playing to ensure that Ghana is able to capitalize on the production of bauxite and aluminium for national development and economic growth. We'll be back shortly after this break. Don't go away.
There's innovation from Goyal that takes you further. New Goyal Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead with expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. Ghana's annual inflation rate accelerated for the 10th consecutive month to 19.4% in March of 2022 from 15.7% in February. This was the highest rate since August of 2009, breaching the Bank of Ghana's target band of 6% to 10% for the seventh month. Food price growth quickened to 22.4% from 17.4% in February, driven by cooking oil, water and cereal products. Non-food inflation also climbed to 17 from 14.5% on account of prices of transportation, 27.6%, of which fuels and housing and utilities 21.4 percent on a monthly basis consumer prices surged by four percent the most since january of 2016 the strong acceleration in consumer prices comes after the bank of ghana lifted its key rates by a massive 250 basis points bps to 17 percent on march 21st saying already high inflation was being worsened by the russia ukraine war the government also announced a flurry of spending cuts to tackle inflation, reduce the deficit and restore a depreciating local currency. Speaking at a press briefing, government statistician Professor Samuel Kobne Nim explained that taking a look at the trends over the last three months, one would want to assume that the effects of the Russian-Ukraine war, if anything, is now telling on inflation, given that the highest inflation was in housing, water, electricity and gas, and it's now telling on transport and food. So it's clearly pronouncing that the war is having effect on these two items. The data that we collect is simply on prices, quantities, and, and weights. But if you look at the trend over the last three months, one would want to assume that the effect of the war in Ukraine, if anything, is now telling on inflation, given that for the months of January, February, the highest inflation was in housing, water, electricity, and gas. And now we're seeing the drift away from housing, water, electricity, and gas, and it's now telling on transport and food. So it's clearly the pronouncement that the war is having effect on these two items. That is why now we see a change around away from housing, water, electricity, and gas to transport having the highest um, division rate of inflation of 27.6%. So from that trend perspective, one can surmise that it is now that we are beginning to feel the effect if we that is why we are seeing a change away from housing, electricity and gas to transport having the highest division with inflation rate 27.6%. The government statistician added, thus from the perspective, one can summarize. Are you an importer or exporter? Do you need quick financing at the best rate on the market? ADB has good news for you. Walk into any Agricultural Development Bank location nationwide for that solution to all your trade financing needs. ADB offers you pre-financing of exports and imports, post-shipment credit facilities, bank guarantees, the issuance and acceptance of letters of credit, documentary bills for collection, outward documentary collection. Enjoy free advisory services from our well-trained, dedicated trade officers. Exporters of agricultural products are encouraged to take advantage of this great service. For further inquiries, call us on 0302-210-210. ADB, making trade finance easy. ADB, truly agric and more. ADB. Ad 
same time next week for some more on international trade related activities here in Ghana and beyond. International Trade Focus is brought to you by Gold Good Energy, ADB, Truly, Agric and more, Public Elegance and Pediasi Valley Resort. My name is Anas Pio. Bye bye. Join us same time next week.